Spirit gives me. Uh, and then I'm going to reveal something by the mind of God that's speaking to me. And God rested on the sixth day. Now, you mothers out there who are watching today, how many months did you carry your child? Nine months. So during that nine month period of what we call that protracted period of time, through um, matriculation, your child was shaped like the number six. At the ninth month, the head and the feet turns upside down wow. and the body becomes the number nine. nine. In wow. Matthew 6 and 9 is the Lord's Prayer. It has approximately 66 letters, but there's 66 books in the Bible. And so when we're talking about encoding God, in order for us to know God, we Miraculous. have to fall in love with God. It's not enough just to say, I love God. I ask preachers, when, is the, when was the last time that you made love with God in his word? They look at me, Dr. Nadell and Dr. Wendy, like I've lost my mind. There's got to be a relationship with God in order to understand his spirituality or his supernaturality few minutes and I'm done here. And so then, now allow me to ask you guys a question. What did Jesus carry to Mount Calvary across? Oh, so the prophet Isaiah says to understand the supernaturality of who Christ is. And a son, a child shall be born. A son is given. A son is given. So a child is born and a son is given. That's 100% man. Okay. And the government shall be where? Upon his shoulder. So the cross is the government that Christ was carrying. Because Jesus was on the cross for a period of six hours, covering six dispensations of innocence, yes. yeah. conscience, human government, okay? Uh, not just innocence, conscience, human government, promise, law, and grace. Shape like that number six in the womb of, you, of your mothers, you beautiful mm -hmm. mothers. So Jesus was on Calvary for six hours on the cross. Oh, so then he was on the cross from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Nine times three equals 27 books of the New Testament. Take the three and the nine, switch them around, you get 39 books of the Old Testament. Nothing is by act. I see Dr. Neville's mind is blowing here. As for <laughs> supernaturality of God. Oh yeah, my. It's, it, the word of God is so perfect. Oh, my God. And, and, and so thank you so much for your patience. So then, again, to have uh, empire, we must extract, uh, in order to have kingdom, in order to have kingdom, we must extract empire. So how do we extract empire, which is the nature of who Satan is? Well, what is the first six letters of the word authority? It reveals the word author. So to have authority, you got to have a connection to the author and the finisher of your faith. So authority comes through the author of that authority, the Lord Jesus Christ. So then, as we go down deeper and we're talking about authority, coming from the author. Now, going back to Genesis 2, God then rests on the seventh day. So then, I'm going to say something that's going to be mind-blowing. You guys already know this. Adam was not the first man 
that was created. Let me say it again. Adam was not the first man that was created. Adam was the first man that was formed from the dust of the ground. And so then in Genesis 1, 27 is creation. Genesis 2 and 7, 27 books in the New Testament is formation. So formation comes from its origin of creation because God said to Adam, multiply and replenish the earth. It means I want Adam to replace something that was there before Adam. Because in Isaiah 14, Lucifer deceived the nations. Nations before Adam? Yes. As we're talking about the supernaturality of God versus the unnaturality uh, of Satan here. Almost not done here uh, today. And so then when we talk about God in his nature. Now, when the individual tonight, you guys uh, will go out into um, the beautiful um, countryside of South Africa or outside of your home, you look up into the heavens. What you and I will see, brothers and sisters, is represents the direct manifestation of what's inside of you and I. Let me say it again. So when we look into the heavens, we're created in the image and likeness of God. We're seeing an entity that which represents what's inside of us. Wow. So every individual is like a snowflake, not the snowflakes of Hollywood. <laughs> Only one made out of Hollywood, which another topic for another day. But in the natural, a snowflake has six points. Man formed on the sixth day. Every snowflake is individually created by God. So God here in his supernaturality created the five points of physics. In the beginning, God time created the heaven space and the earth matter. The spirit of God energy moved motion upon the face of the waters. So Jesus Christ, who is God himself, is the creator of the five points of physics and physics and science, time, space, matter, energy, and motion. And let me go one step further. God does not operate in time. God is not subjugated to time. Time came into being because of the fall of Lucifer. God created Lucifer, but God did not create the sep Satan, and he did not create the devil. Yes. So then uh, we cannot say that Lucifer created uh, himself, Satan, and who is the devil, because only God can create and only God can destroy. So then how does uh, Lucifer become Satan? Because of the fall of Lucifer or Lucifer, uh, another Latin interpretation for Lucifer is phosphorus. That's a chemical compound that's found in soda pop, soda drinks, and many meats around the world. Wait a minute. So there's a chemical compound, phosphorus, which the last five letters uh, reveals the word Horus, the third eye on the top of the pyramid, wow. the back of the one dollar bill. Wow. It's luciferic, as well wow. also the unnaturality of Satan here. And so then my job, I am a contract killer. My job is to decapitate demons. Now, so would you say that people drinking all of these phosphorus yeah. drinks and phosphorus being in our food is a, a side up to yes. undermine the body? I've yes. never seen that before, Bishop. Woo, you hit it right on the button, woman of God. It's wow. a side up. There is two scientific terms, and you hit some powerful nerves with me, woman of God, as we're talking about not just the supernaturality of God, but the unnaturality of Satan. There are two scientific terms, one called neuroplasticity. It means that the human brain becomes the shape of what the individual is thinking at that moment. So when they see a McDonald's commercial, 
okay, because of Luciferic marketing, because Satan is a master marketer. Yes. The human brain becomes the shape of what they see, which then produces what we call neural parasitology. So then what is neural parasitology? That's when because of the person's past pain and trauma that they never dealt with, it then affects, infects their decision making to become poor dieters. Because of the decision to eat McDonald's and Burger King and Wendy's, all of this poison, and then that poison which they ingest and regurgitate yes. becomes parasites in the body. And the parasites infect the brain neuroplasticity, which thereby poisons the decision making of the individual. Wow. wow. So then they're eating Lucifer, they're drinking Lucifer, and then they become Lucifer, phosphorus or phosphoric acid, which is a second Latin term for Lucifer, okay? L, Lucifer, S, Satan, double D, L, S, and can I say this as a quick side note, and I'm almost done here. No, no, we're we're loving it. it. We're loving it. We're loving it. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. I love you guys so much. So to understand the nature of Lucifer, which is unnatural, we have to examine the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 28, verse 13, where the king of Tyrus, now, yes. Tyrus is a Persian term, uh, is composed of two Persian meanings. Ty, T-Y, means to be attached to something, to be tied or to be attached. Then the term Rus, R-U-S, uh, is broken down in a second Persian term, uh, which is the term Lenol, capital L-L-E-N-O-L, -L -L. oh, Tylenol, pharmacia, pharmaceutical witchcraft. Now, the King Tyrus, I know this is some heavy stuff because a lot of, and you guys probably heard of this before, but many people around South Africa, they have never heard of this type of teaching. No. We'll yeah. Talk yeah. about the supernationality of God versus the unnaturality of Satan. So Tyrus is the Siop of Lucifer. But there are nine diamonds or stones on the breastplate of Lucifer. Wait a minute. But the high priest has 12. God limits Tyrus, whose name is Lucifer. But notice the first three stones. Okay. Sardis, topaz, and diamond reveals the nature of the unnaturality of Satan. What is the first letter of Sardis? S. What is the first letter of topaz, T? What is the first letter of diamond, D, STD? So when I say STD, sexually transmitted diseases, this comes from God. So sexually transmitted diseases, gonorrhea, syphilis, is the nature of the unnaturality of who Satan is. Oh my God, this gets heavy mm. as we're yes. getting deeper into this. Now, remember no, when I said so that Jesus carried the government on his shoulder, the cross. The cross has five points. One, two, three, four, five. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So then when we talk about even the apostle Peter in my conclusion, Peter was crucified, how? Upside down. So remember, Jesus gave Peter the keys of the kingdom of heaven, but he gives Paul in Acts 25 through 27 the keys of the kingdom of God. Oh, there's a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Here's the difference here. We have one church, one body, the Lord Jesus Christ, and that one church, one body of Jesus Christ has two natures. We are the body uh, of Jesus in time called the kingdom of heaven operating in time. 
but yet operating outside of time through timelessness mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. the kingdom of God, Christ. So we are the body of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of Jesus in time, in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ, operating out of time. One savior, one church, two natures. So Peter receiving the keys of the kingdom of heaven, okay? And then Peter later was crucified, how saints upside down on a cross. So that cross, which becomes an upside down, what? A sword and a key. Everything's ready. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Now, That's yeah, powerful. Yeah. That's <laughs> powerful. A sword oh and a key. And so Jesus carried the government, both the mm. sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, in the key of the kingdom, both of heaven, time, and of God, uh, Christ, or timelessness. And then Jesus Christ, who gave up his life on the cross. I'm going to say something else here, and thank you so much for your patience. The Lamb of God died on the cross, but God did not die. Allow me to explain that. Yes. You cannot kill God. Mm. Yeah. Now somebody said, wait a minute, Bishop, you said, um, you've been saying for the past 45 minutes to an hour that Jesus is God. Yes. So the lamb, the flesh of Jesus died. Yes. But Jesus, who is God, God in Jesus did not die. So yes. when Joseph of Arimathea, the term Arimathea means arithmetic in the Samaritan lexicon, Begged for the body of Jesus, he was begging for the church. Ooh. Oh, wow. Shut so when they brought the church down from the cross, then they put the church in the tomb. Yes. Mm. Oh, oh. God yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. I am the resurrection. resurrection. And the light, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So while the body of Jesus, the kingdom of heaven, was in the tomb, the invisible body of God, the kingdom of God, went to heaven before the mercy seat, presenting his blood, came back into time three days and three nights later, and also yes. went down into the catacombs of hell, uh, unlocked the prison doors of the yes. saints. Yes. Because he's got, he, now Jesus took, he didn't ask Satan for the keys of life, of death and hell and destruction. Jesus got the keys of death, hell and the grave back from Satan because he took it because of the fall of the first Adam. Yeah. Sure. So Satan had to relinquish domination or dominion of the keys of death, hell, and the grave to the second Adam. Then the second Adam got into the elevator of eternity and went back into the body, his body in the tomb, and he is the resurrection in the life. And notice there, Jesus is the Ark of the Covenant. I'm going to say something that's going to blow your minds. Now, in the Old Testament, there were four priests and four Levites that carried the Ark of the Covenant. Now, there were two angels at the mouth of the tomb. One of the angels was the same yeah. from his sister McDonald that Woo! had the gleaming sword 4,000 years earlier yes. in the garden. And now the same angel... Oh. Oh, Second angel, they said, wait a minute now, we got the wait on Peter and John, the other two angels, the run to the tomb. Oh, even though love, John outran the key, Peter, but when John, love, got at the tomb, he couldn't go in because he didn't have the keys of the key. Oh, wow. So Peter <laughs> comes, unlocks the tomb. Phew love in the keys of the kingdom of God go in yeah. and now they lift Jesus as the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, sure. 
And so when we talk about the supernaturality of God versus the uh, nat unnaturality of Satan, I'm going to say this and I will conclude this uh, today. You guys are so patient here. What is the supernaturality of God? Now, when Jesus in John 3 was teaching Nicodemus, he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's one law. That's one kingdom. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So then what Jesus was saying to, uh, to Nicodemus, now as a side note, Jesus never asked a question with a question. Jesus would always ask a question with the answer contained in the question. Example, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Or the answer is in the question, I am. So then here in John chapter 3, that which is born in the flesh is flesh. That which is born in the spirit is spirit. Nicodemus said, shall a man be born a second time? and go back into his mother's room, he answered his own question. Here's the revelation. Jesus, the master teacher, was saying, in the, I hope everyone's taking notes. You guys know this, but all of, you, all of your people yeah, this are- is powerful. Powerful. This is powerful. This is powerful. In the natural, a child is conceived to be born nine months later. That which is born in the flesh is flesh. Now, that which is born of the spirit is spirit is the complete opposite. You and I have been born again to be reconceived back to God prior to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Wow. Wow. Sure. Oh. Oh my God. And so then, in the spirit, yes. we go from being born again back to being a seed into the consciousness of God, where it's no more black and white or yellow or pink or red. We become spirit because let me tell you, we are not, we are not human beings living a spiritual experience, but rather we are a spiritual being living a humanistic experience. That's the spirituality of God versus the unnaturality of Satan. I'm going to say this and I'm done tonight. Now, I know there's a book that many scholars, and I know you've heard of this, uh, uh, Dr. Neville and Dr. Wendy, um, The Book of Enoch. Now, you know, we got 66 books in the Bible, 45 were taken out, okay, by the Vatican through Constantine, because uh, originally we had 111 books, which represents the 111 languages of God, okay? Now we have 67 languages of God, and every verse represents the dialect of God. Ah, so when you read the word of God, you're reading both the language of God in the dialect of his spirit, which represents the algorithm of his thinking. Because David said, thou has anoint what? Test what? My head with oil. So the, please write this. Oh my God. The anointing yeah. preachers, and you guys know this. Yeah, we're oh, taking notes, Bishop. We're God. taking oh, notes. Woo! Yeah. Every preacher, please allow the bishop to teach you. Stop saying that the Holy Ghost is the anointing and the anointing is the Holy Ghost. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Because remember back in the Old Testament, when the prophet Moses had built the tabernacle, even though the Holy Ghost was in between the two cherubims on the Ark of the Covenant, but the tabernacle had to follow the cloud of the anointing. Yes. So we yes. got churches in South Africa yes. who are filled with God, but they're not following the anointing, anointing. because they went west, but the cloud has gone east. Right. Yeah. So yes. We have to follow the cloud or the anointing. Now, getting back to what David said uh, in the 23rd Psalm, thou has anointest my head with oil. Now, notice the word thou. Couple of T-H-O-U, which is the first four letters of the word thought. So the anointing mm. of God is not the bottle of olive oil that you buy at the supermarket. <laughs> the anointing of God 
is when God is thinking about Hope Christian Center. Wow. Wow. Hope Christian Thank you, Center Jesus. is That's about beautiful. ready to take over the government in Pretoria. <laughs> Hope Christian Center. It's a yes, <laughs> hallelujah. We can't feed 25,000 people. We can't even feed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fishes. That's seven. Oh, what happened? Jesus Christ had commanded, and I know it seems like I'm all over the map, but I'm just moving according to the spirit. Because throughout the gospels, he says to the men, sit down in companies by 50s or sit down in companies by 100s. Why? Because Jesus is a God of order. Yes. So the men must sit down in order for their families to be, to be fed. Listen, sisters, though you single sisters at hope, listen, don't chase a man. <laughs> listen, listen, if he is broke, busted, and disgusted, don't marry him. If he can't see his shoes, when he's sick, don't marry him because he doesn't <laughs> care about his health. Listen, you need a man, sisters, not a male from the waist down, but a man from the neck up. Yes. And sisters no, and brothers, 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 stop looking for a Kim Kardashian with 10 <laughs> wigs, five wreaths, and three and a half extensions, which came from a, a tail of a dead horse in Pakistan, sacrificed the devils. Okay? <laughs> you want a woman? Stop trying to buy a red brothers on ehominy.beam. <laughs> 100 ways of compatibility <laughs> on match John Hill in the Christian confusion mango. Stop. Well, you're saying oh, the Holy Ghost, the devil is a lie. God yes. is not in the matchmaking service online. There was good a good word, of, Bishop. Good, good word. Seven years ago, a good friend of mine, um, a, a Jamaican deacon, this has nothing against Jamaican people. I told him, Dr. Neville and Dr. Wynn, do not marry that. That's a man that you're marrying. The Holy Ghost told me. I'm telling you, he went to uh, a redeemed Christian church of God uh, in Montreal. I'm not going to say the name of the church. I told him, do not marry that. That's, a, that's, that's not a uh, woman. That's a man. He said, well, Bishop, you're jealous. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay. And on the honeymoon night, when the moon came Ooh. down and when the, when the honey ran out, <laughs> the thing came, which was not supposed to come. He ran like a jackrabbit on, on, on fleas, with, on wings, out of the, because the devil made him look like a fool. Yes. When we're yeah. talking about the supernaturality of God, the supernaturality of God will expose the unnaturality of the devil. In my conclusion, getting back to Enoch, it's interesting that in chapter 6 of Enoch, and I know that this is not taught in the church, but Enoch, uh, being a prophet and a seer, there's three volumes of Enoch, okay? Just as, as a side note, and I'm gone. In the sixth chapter of Enoch, it reveals 20 names of the fallen angels of Genesis chapter 6 that we call the Nephilims. Yes. Okay. yes. And so these names of these fallen angels, and I'm going to give you the interpretation of each name, which represents a demonic dark code of what we call unnaturality. Okay. So in Enoch chapter 6, these 20 fallen angels... Uh, in their interpretations. Uh, this first demon, Simjaza, means cognition. Semiasaz means thinking, and I'll email this to Dr. Wendy. Uh, Eric Kabai means yes. that wheel. Ramil means begin. Kobil means process. Tamil means reversing. Ramil means the design. Uh, Daniel means uh, from God. Uh, Ezekiel means to reorder. Baraquil means a new design. Asel means a new pathogen. Uh, Aramos means protein. Uh, Baratil means beginning. Ananil means kingdom. Zekiel means government. Uh, Zamzapil means back to heaven. Uh, Zetiriel means to rule. Uh, Turiel means humanity. Okay. John Jail, these are demons that I'm exposing from Enoch chapter 6. John Jail means to reset. Okay. 
and sario means deception. In other words, here is what I call the code, the demonic code of the plan of Lucifer, Satan, who is the devil, what I call the unnaturality of Satan. Here it is. The names of these fallen angels in Enoch 6, which was uh, um, originally written in Genesis chapter 6, but removed um, from Genesis 6 because of the Vatican Church through Constantine, okay? These demons represent cognition or cognitional thinking that will begin a process of reversing the design from God to reorder yes. a new design, a new pathogen, a new protein with a new beginning, a new kingdom, a new government going back to heaven to rule humanity in order to reset DNA through deception. Wow, wow that's powerful. Sure.